Hi everyone and welcome. We're down here at my wormery and the attention of today's work is going to be this bin right here. This bin is one that we've been tracking for a while now um, from day one and today it's 110 days old. So it was 10 days ago today that this bin had reached 100 days of age. And at that point we had decided that the material in this bin was looking really nice and that it might be time to start trying to let the things in this bin wind down. Um, the idea being that Maybe that would be the last feeding that we administer for some time. Give the worms a little bit of um, a little bit of an opportunity to work their way through whatever remains in the bin, as far as old food and remainders of uh, bedding materials. So today's objective is not to feed the bin, but more to just take a look and see how things are progressing. The hope is that most of the food that they've been given up until now has been depleted and that um, from this point forward they're going to continue eating but now they're going to really consume whatever remaining bedding material is in the bin eventually driving this to a, a point where it's just all broken down so I'm very curious to see how things are progressing in here it's been work it's been working really nicely with a pretty good sized population in here it's been proceeding towards the finish line at a nice pace and I'm hoping that it's uh, it's doing good so let's get a glove on let's get this thing up on the bench and take a look at how it's progressing so now at 110 days old, this does ultimately become my oldest bin anymore. All the bins that were older than this one have been harvested. And it's interesting to see how things progress from check-in to check-in. This piece of plastic has been doing a really nice job containing the moisture within the bin, not letting it evaporate out. This was actually the first of my bins to receive a plastic covering on top. And I've since adopted the practice in all of my bins. It does such a nice job keeping the moisture that's present in the bin down in the bin instead of letting it evaporate out and dry. I guess the other result of um, having all this moisture on top is that the, the worms spend a lot more time there and all these castings are evidence of that. And they also use the paper as a food source. So in time a piece of flat paper with which you were covering up the entire top surface it just ends up a, a chewed out um, piece of scrap <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure what we can use this piece of paper for but I'm gonna set it aside maybe we can do a partial cover-up at the end um, just see what we can still salvage out of these pieces of paper I'm just trying to handle the paper very gingerly to see if I can preserve it as a single piece but clearly here too you can see it's been completely chewed out and the only reason it looked like a single piece of paper is because there's yet another piece of paper underneath here <laughs> it's the uh, it's the piece of paper with which we had marked where we had last fed this bin um, it's a coffee filter not sure when it was introduced to the bin I do remember one that had a couple holes in it like this and I believe this was new 10 days ago so that's the only reason it's still a single piece of paper is because it was only added 10 days ago during the last feeding. And I guess the only, only things that remain here are just a couple more scraps of paper that were serving as covering for the feeding area. But otherwise the material across the top just looks like really beautiful fine vermicompost. Nice castings everywhere. But I also see I guess evidence of little food fragments, little bedding fragments here and there, which in time will all get broken down and eaten. If you stop giving them delicious cantaloupe and fruits and vegetables, they'll be, you know, required to continue feeding and they'll turn their attentions to these little scraps of perhaps not as delicious food as they've had until now, but just as suitable as far as nourishment is concerned. Here's like a, a banana stem, but it's super thin, so the majority of it's been consumed. It's, um, it's, it's almost gone, basically. Here I see a really dark colored um, worm cocoon. When the worm cocoons get this color, this dark brown color, that means they're getting pretty close to hatching. A, uh, a worm cocoon that's fairly light in color will be one that was fairly recently deposited. One that's dark in color like this will um, will likely be hatching very soon. It's kind of cool. I think uh, I think it was in the last video 
or maybe the video just prior where we had gone hunting for cocoons and we had stacked a whole bunch of them up next to each other where you can really compare their colors one to the other. Um, I'll put a link to that video. I'll put it up in the corner so you can go over there and check it out. It is kind of cool where we um, kind of collect up a bunch of cocoons and stack them next to each other and we could see the real differences in color. I see castings everywhere and very little of anything else. This is maybe the peel of an apple. I guess maybe if it is, then I always suspect that maybe there's like a wax that they put on apples to give them a little bit of protection from spoiling, a little bit more sheen and color. Sometimes I wonder if that's the main reason certain things that look like they should have been depleted a while ago are still around. Maybe it's not even natural material anymore. Maybe it's some sort of a, a waxy film. But then again, it could just be, you know, very close to being done, but not quite there yet. So, um... Because, yeah, like I said earlier, this is really just meant to be a little bit of an inspection. There's no intention here of uh, adding any more food. The game plan on this bin is to starve it for a while. And, you know, when we say starve it, it doesn't mean um, the worms have nothing to eat. It just means that everything that's still in the bin that's edible, all the remaining scraps of stuff, is what we want them to turn their attention to without any new food being added and um, eventually we want the bin to be just castings only. We, we want to be able to harvest this material and use it out in the garden. And so far, it looks like we're very close to that. This material also has some sticks and stems in it. These are all the, the stems of leaves, which, you know, if you're composting with a huge number of worms, and I think we would maybe not categorize this bin as having a huge number of worms, it's got a fair number of worms. I think we estimated its population at being somewhere in the neighborhood of about 1,000 or 1,500 worms. But you could see that they're quite capable and they, they burn through their food supply very quickly. However, certain things like these little sticks, little sticks and stems, they're just too tough to become soft enough for the worms to be able to access um, in such a short time. Because I mean, if we're at 100 and day, 110 days at this point, and things are looking this good in this bin, I would not be surprised if in another couple of weeks that we're going to be left with really just um, castings only. Because even though we've got full banana peels here, that doesn't mean anything. That stuff goes pretty quick once it gets started. It sits in the bin usually for a little while in the beginning. Um, but once the worms get going on it, it doesn't last long. So now that now it's already been in here for you know a week and a half, it's definitely destined to get gobbled up quickly. So I think this really tells us that there is an ample amount of food remaining in this bin still. Um, definitely coming along nicely. Definitely, you know, got the attention of the worms is being worked on. And I don't anticipate it being in here for much longer. I uh I think if we wait another ten days again. Next time we check in here, we're going to find a completely different situation. I think we're going to find much fewer food scraps at that point, and it'll be that much closer to being harvested. So I think just to help kind of reconstruct what had been the feeding zone here previously, I think we're going to just take a few items that we found along the way and kind of reestablish a little bit of a feeding zone structure here, similar to what we usually do. So, I mean... We'll just drop in a couple of these pieces of paper that we uh, found along the way as sort of a, a foundation, a little bit of a platform. It's kind of nice because it gets soaked with all of the juices of the, um, the food that sits above it, making it into a very delectable um, food item for the worms later. After they finish the actual food, they'll, they'll go for this carbon um, bedding just as well because it's full of all the juices and flavor of the food and some of the nutrients from being soaked in its juices. So I think that's a great place for it to be right underneath the feeding zone. This, I guess, let's open it up. This is going to be one of our little food packets. We had been placing all of our food into little bundles, little paper packages. And this is an example of one that's just not been infiltrated as much as all the rest yet. So it's still clearly a wrapper around um, around the food that they were given. So we'll keep that as a bundle just like that. 
But all these other pieces of paper that we see everywhere, those are all just going to be like scraps of the worms coming in, taking the food, and, you know, moving on to another food supply and leaving the bedding there. So that's good. We're just using all that as material right underneath the, the middle where the food is. And we'll just take all the food that we found and we'll spread it out evenly across that bedding that we sort of reconstructed. I'm not sure if this is really going to help a great deal. I'm sure the worms would have no problem finding all of this stuff within the bin, regardless of where it's located. So I'm just kind of taking what's somewhat scattered right now throughout the material and trying to just help it focus a little bit back into the middle. Because next time we check in, at least we got a little bit of a spectacle to see when the worms are all working the material and all hanging out in the same spot where the party is. Just want to check on the edges. The edges is where a lot of my bins um, experience a lot of dryness. But ever since I've been using plastic coverings, it seems to me like the, uh, the dryness situation is just a thing of the past. Everywhere I look, the material has just the perfect dampness to it. Um, it's not soaking, but it's perfectly moist. The plastic sheeting captures any moisture that's attempting to evaporate out and it allows it to condense and drop back down into the bin so the moisture never gets lost very little of it gets lost around the edges of the plastic and by having really moist conditions throughout the bin it really promotes a lot of movement in the bin the worms feel very comfortable being just about anywhere in the bin because it's all comfortable as far as moisture levels are concerned so at some point, though, we're going to have to allow this stuff a little bit of an opportunity to dry out. Um, but for now, I think we're just going to continue with the plastic sheeting over the top, allowing for the um, reclaiming of any moisture that attempts to evaporate out. And, uh, and that'll, I think, help with the, um, with the breakdown of the material throughout the bin. So I'm... Um, Taking this piece of paper, which had previously served the function of top covering, and it's going to sort of still be a top covering, but now right where the feeding zone is, right across the top of where we placed all of the food scraps that we found along the way. And these pieces still seem sort of big enough, and I think I should be able to sort of jigsaw puzzle these back together into some form of top covering, so that'll be fine. But before we cover up here, I'm still interested in seeing how things are on this side. Perhaps if we find another large hunk of food or anything, we can just place it over in the middle as well with the rest of the stuff. So far, nothing. Well, nothing <laughs> but worms. Worms everywhere. Totally enjoying this material through and through. No dryness, not a, a sign of dryness at all pretty much perfect as far as worms are concerned it's the only thing I you know I had a little short wish list here then I would say I wish these stems had a greater opportunity to get broken down but they're um, they're like little sticks you know it takes time it takes time for it to soften up such that the worms can gain access to it so if you're gonna be composting with a large number of worms in a fairly small space and they work their way through the material very quickly then certain slower composting materials um, might just be uh, what you're left with. Not much you could do about that, I guess. Unless you end up using that as the measure for when you consider this stuff to be really gone, treating all of that as tiny scraps of food that they could still be taking advantage of as long as they're still in the bin. Over here I see another one. It's always cool because when you finally slow down and you start looking across the top of the surface, especially after you've jostled it up a little bit like this, you start seeing cocoons, they start to surface. And it's such a promising thing to see, you know, knowing that the next generation is already on its way. I'm going to see what we can make of this piece of paper here. <laughs> it's totally falling apart. It's amazing that it's held together this much. Oh, that was connected, but now it's not. I like this stuff. I like having sheets of paper like this, even if it's multiple layers, because a lot of the moisture that's trying to evaporate collects, condenses back down into the bin, 
it's got a place to sort of rest rather than just going right back down into the material and keeping the material super damp it, uh, it actually creates a little bit of a kind of a moisture haven that the worms can crawl up onto and take advantage of. And that's why we always find this stuff, these sheets of paper on top covered in castings. It's just evidence of the worms having been there and in large numbers and for quite a while enjoying the moisture that collects there. At day 110 I'm starting to try to see if I can in my mind imagine how much longer it's going to take for this to um, run its course and get completely finished. But for now, they've still got their task at hand of trying to finish off the remainder of the food. I'm glad we had a chance to sort of rifle through the material quickly to see how things look, but also concentrate those food scraps and bedding scraps all into one place and also into kind of a coherent shape that's consistent with what we normally do in our feedings. A couple of really large size worm eggs. And these are a little bit lighter in color. There's another one right here too, similar in color. A little bit lighter. It's kind of fun. One of these days I'm just going to go on like a, a hunt and see how many cocoons I can gather. It'd be interesting. But not today. <laughs> I'm seeing them everywhere though. They're just scattered all over the material. I think just to restore the top covering that we're used to having here, sort of a little buffer zone between the plastic and the material, I'm going to use this piece of new newspaper here. Uh, by the time we come back next time it'll be completely drenched. It'll very likely have had some visitors cruising around on the top so we'll see how it progresses I like these 10 day intervals too that we've been checking in on these bins it's been uh, 10 day intervals ever since the bin was 50 days old so at day 60 at day 70 at day 80 we've been checking in every 10 days and it's a it's a nice interval of time it doesn't make me feel like I've neglected the bin or forgotten about it or you know I don't feel like so much time has passed that I should be of concern so I think we'll give it another 10 days or so. So maybe we'll uh, we'll check back in here at day 120 and see how another 10 days of composting does for this bin. I got a feeling we're going to see some pretty good um, progress on that remaining food down in there. So let's keep our fingers crossed. All right, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll uh, I'll clean up, but that's boring. I won't keep you around for that. I'll just take this as a quick opportunity to say thank you. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate your company. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, hopefully you did. Please remember to leave me a thumbs up. It only takes a moment and it helps a lot and it's really appreciated. Also consider becoming a subscriber to the channel as well. That's really appreciated too. Now let's get these guys back up on the shelf. Get back to work. Thanks everyone. Have a great day. Bye now.